what um, triggered the move to more of a run-oriented game, and obviously it seemed to have some some dual benefits of not only moving the ball but keeping the defense rested the second half. I, I don't think we were just trying to figure out what we could do to to move. You know, that was a number one ranked defense in the country. You know, coming into the game, so you, you just got to keep poking and prodding and figure out what works. You know, sometimes I think you got to be you just can't be one dimensional. Um, we have to try to be somewhat balanced where we can run the ball. Um, and throw the ball, and, and that's what we mean by being balanced. It's not one guy carrying it or whoever, but um, I, I feel like we ran the ball. Um, didn't run the ball bad last week against Colorado, so we're trying to build upon that. Um, but we knew it was going to be some tough sledding against a, a really good front, you know, and they held a lot of teams um, down. You know, that's why they're number one ranked defense in the country. But uh, I thought our guys did a good job, especially the way they competed, you know, to start the second half. You know, I think we had a 12 play drive and an 18 play drive, so. Um, we're just a little too short. How much of that was the offensive line, and how much was Josh Kelly? And in, in, in I think it's a combination of everybody. I think it's our tight ends were involved in that. I think our, our receivers did a really good job. Um, obviously, Josh, I think, is getting more comfortable. You know, the, the more he plays a little bit, um, we've been unsettled a little bit. We just got Boss Boss back, so that's his second game. So we kind of settled, but we didn't have Justin Murphy today, so Murph went down. So we've been in a state of flux. I don't think we've had the same group. Um, in every game, but uh, you know they, they competed, but we we still came up short. So, Coach, uh, how much improvement have you seen in your quarterback and the young quarterback? I, I've seen a lot. I mean, I think Dorian every week has gotten better. Um, you know, that's what I love about him. You know, he 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 just you can you manufacture every situation he's going to be in. You, you can't. You know, and I think every time he's in something, he learns from it. Um, he's a lot of fun to coach, you know, and he, he sees things. Um, and so when we get we get more reps and the benefit of more experience for him, the better he's going to be. But I think each week, I think he's gotten better, um, you know, and that's good. And then it, he's, he's a lot of fun to coach. Well, would you kind of put that in the encouraging loss category and that you saw some things? I don't, I don't, I don't have categories, Ben, and I don't mean, I mean, just – I mean, at the end of the day, you're judged by winning and losing, and, and that's, uh, you know, there's positives in every game. You know, there's there's been games I've won that we haven't played very well, and there's a lot you have to do, and there's been games you lost that you did some things really well. And you, But we're very analytical in our after-action reports in terms of what we're looking for. So, you know, it's just like every week, there's certain things we did better, and we need to build upon those, and there's other things that we need to clean up. So that's how we kind of look at it. Did you think maybe there was a lot of tangible progress in, in important areas? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, that's what you hope for every week. So um, we'll see where we go from here. I know we got another challenge next week when we go up to Cal. We, we had to go on the road, and winning on the road is very difficult in this league. So, would you say this was a step forward for Dorian? And why is he why is he fun to coach? Um, yeah, I, I think every week's a step forward for Dorian. Every day in the practice field's a step forward for Dorian, and I think that's what makes him fun to coach. Is he's he's like a sponge. He takes everything in, and he he. Uh, he can regurgitate it, and he usually doesn't make the same mistake twice. You know, so he's uh, he's very teachable. He's, he's got a great football mind. Um, you know, as he's starting to 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 expand what you know we can do with him, because the more comfortable he gets with running things, the more he can come back to things. So, um, you know, he's he's really enjoy coaching the kid. Um, second straight game where Joshua Kelly did really well. What is mm -hmm. it like to sort of see that consistency and comfort emerge? It's from? good, you know, because we started the year for us, and then there was a little lull for him. And then the, the great example of, of Josh and just his his positive attitude. And, you know, he didn't sulk or, or pout when he didn't play much against Fresno. And he just went to work and, and continues to, you know, he was the best player in training sessions before the Colorado game. And it showed in the Colorado game. And he was the best this week getting ready to play a really, really good Washington team. And it showed it in, in this game. So, um, you know, hopefully um, he continues to build and understands that, you know, the, the time he's invested, you know, in his production is paying off for him on the field. So, Coach, one of the phrases you've used since camp and the players have adopted is the process. Where are you with the process? What's your assessment of where the process is with the team? Uh, that's an interesting question because I've never used the process. So. <laughs> Using it, they keep talking about the process of growth and maturation. Yeah, we talk about growth. You know, I don't. I mean, I think everybody, whatever the buzzword is in society nowadays, um, you know, don't really care about the buzzwords. But we, we talk about development. You know, and we want to develop as a, as a individuals. You know, in everything that we do, whether it's academics or athletics or socially or spiritually. So every single day, you're trying to be better than you were the day before. But, um, you know, if that's the word they use, then good for them. 
I think you went more than a quarter and a half without a penalty. Penalty, and then and then some big ones came up again too that extended drives that yep. led to scores, and then in the second half too that wiped out first down completions for Dorian. Um, so how, how frustrating is that to see those? Well, the pop ones up? that extended the drives were the big things. I think the ones that extended the first down, we actually came back from them. So, you know, those weren't the things that ended the drive. So it's good to see that we could overcome them. You know, really. Not only is it the penalty, it's your response after the penalty. But again, as we talk to our guys, we, you know, we had the one roughing the passer penalty that extended the drive, and they scored on it. Well, just because that, that that penalty didn't give them a touchdown, we still need to bear down after those situations. But but um, you can't give Jake Browning 15 extra yards. I mean, you have to make him earn everything he can do. I mean, I, I know he's he's the all-time leading passer in Washington history, and there's been some really good quarterbacks in Washington. So um, you can't give him extra snaps, and that's what we did in the first half, and that's why you know we were down. The way we were down, you know, we got a chance to get back into the game, but I think we gave him too much of a lead in the first half for us to be able to get back into that. So, Coach uh, Elijah Wade went down earlier in the game, came back in. Did he re-aggravate uh, the injury that he had earlier? I, I don't know. They just again, and can we just clarify this? I mean, I get asked questions all the time. They just tell me, are they in or are they out? And I'm not being evasive. They just tell me they're in or they're out. They don't. You don't have time in the middle of a game for to get a, hey, what was it and where is this? It's just. They'll come over and say he's out for now, and then they came back and said he's in. So I, I don't ask any questions on that. So I don't I don't have an answer for you. So. And then a second question: uh, Caleb Wilson kind of broke out tonight. Um, he had a few long catches. Uh, what do you think of his performance, and how was he able to step up tonight? Well, I think some of the things they do coverage-wise allowed you to kind of work the middle of the field, and that was kind of the plan for us trying to go into the game. Um, I think Felton did the same thing. You know, you look at where some of those plays that we we got was because we were trying to work the middle of the field. So, but I was really happy with how Caleb played tonight. Scored 24 points against a defense that had been averaging, giving up only 11. Do you feel like this could be kind of a, a click, it's starting to click moment for the offense? No. You got to win. You know what I mean? We're not into moral victories. Like, we don't go in and high five each other and say, hey, that was close. You know, let, let, you, yay team. You know, there's a winner and a loser. And so if you win, um, you're excited for about six hours. And if you lose, you're not excited at all. And then we all got to come back tomorrow morning, no matter what we happened the day before, whether we win or we lost, and our sole focus is on Cal. And then that's just kind of the way we've always been. So, um, you know, we didn't high five in the locker room and say, hey, we got close against a really good team. And there are a really good team. You know, Pete's done a great job with that program. But I, I'm not a guy that gets sol soulless and, you know, we were close. You know I mean, that's not, that's not us. So close isn't good. That's close as bad.